building these for her coming up. What's up everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of The Average Craftsman. My name is Tim and on this channel, I do woodworking and DIY projects. So if you're into that sort of thing, please consider subscribing. On today's episode, I will be building these walnut floating shelves. Uh, this is Shelby. She is a workplace proximity acquaintance of mine. And a few weeks ago, she came to me asking if I could build some shelves for her. I never built floating shelves, so I figured what the hell. All right, before we get started, please be sure to check out the description, which has links to a full build article on my website, as well as links to all the tools and materials I used on this project. All right, should we get started? Shall we? Should we go ahead and start? Let's start. Okay, all right, let's go. Let's go. My first stop was at the joiner, where I started milling down the six quarter walnut I bought from my local hardwood dealer. If you don't have access to a joiner and planer, then you can buy pre-milled lumber or use construction lumber such as a 2x8, which you can get at your local home center. The wood I bought was milled on one side already, so it was actually only about 1 and 3 8 inches thick. I wanted the shelves to end up as close to an inch and a quarter as possible, so I was pretty careful with the milling. Once I was finished at the joiner, I headed over to the planer to square up the other face. Having help in the shop sure makes things easier when dealing with longer stock. After the planer, I went over to the table saw to square up the remaining sides on two of the boards. The shelves needed to be 8 inches wide, but the widest boards available were only about 6 inches. I bought a third 6 inch board and ripped off two pieces of 2 inches to make the two 8 inch shelves. With everything milled down, I can now glue up the shelves. I recently bought a biscuit joiner, so I was excited to try it out on this project. Biscuit joiners are a good tool for aligning stock for glue ups. I clamped two pieces of each shelf together and marked out where I wanted to cut the biscuit slots. I then clamped down each piece of the table and started cutting the slots. Since this was my first time using this joiner, I decided to do a dry assembly. Thankfully, everything went together well, so it was time to glue it all up. I clamped everything up and let it dry overnight. The next evening I took the shelves out of the clamps and unfortunately not everything was lined up perfectly on one shelf so I would need to do some further milling. The other shelf was great and I could have gotten away with just sanding it down. I took one pass on the joiner and then I did one very light pass at the planer and that evened everything up. I then went over to the miter saw to cut the shelves to a final length of 72 inches. I then turned my attention to figuring out how I was going to mount these shelves to the walls. I researched a lot of techniques and when it comes to solid wood shelves there seem to be two options, French cleats or some type of rods mounted to the wall. Since these shelves are just a little over an inch thick, I didn't think a French cleat would work well so I decided to go the latter route and bought some floating shelf hardware from Woodcraft. Rockler offers what looks to be the exact same thing and I'll have a link in the description where you can buy these. Each hardware pack contains two rods that can support 75 pounds with a 4 inch deep shelf and 50 pounds with an 8 inch deep shelf. These shelves are 8 inches deep so I decided to go with 3 rods in each shelf thinking that would be about 75 pounds. To install the hardware I first needed to find the studs in the wall. There must be a lot going on in Shelby's walls because a stud finder was pretty much useless. I ended up using rare earth magnets and just ran them over the wall until they stuck to the drywall nails or screws thus identifying the studs. With the studs located, I started laying out the location of the mounting plates. I used two inch screws to attach the mounting plates to the wall. I would drive in one screw and then level the plate and drive in the other. There's nothing tricky about mounting this hardware, just make sure they're level. The somewhat tricky part is when you have to locate and drill the holes in the shelves and unfortunately, I seem to have lost all that footage. It's okay though, there is a technique that you can use that makes this all very easy. 
During my research, I uh, ran across Patrick Hosey's video on the product page for this hardware on the Rockler website. Uh, there's a link to that video in the description. I kind of did a mashup of the technique in that video along with the instructions supplied to the hardware. Each shelf is made up of three pieces, a mounting plate which attaches to the wall, a set screw which screws into the mounting plate, and a rod that screws onto the set screw. The set screws are pointed and the instructions say to attach the mounting plates, insert the set screw, and then hold the shelf up to the set screw and tap on the shelf to leave an indentation marking the location of the required holes. Rather than trying to fumble with the shelves, I cut two story sticks that were the same length and thickness of the shelves but only about three quarter of an inch wide. I held the sticks up to the set screws and tapped over each mounting position with a mallet. This left a mark on the back of the story sticks that showed me where to drill the holes. I then used a dowel jig to drill a 7 16th of an inch hole at each mounting position. If you're using a doweling jig, you don't have to worry about having the story stick or the shelves completely level when marking these positions. As long as the shelves are straight, the dowel jig ensures it will be level because it is centered on the edge when drilling the holes. The only thing you have to make sure of is that you have a story stick for each shelf. You can't use the same story stick from one shelf on another because the holes won't line up correctly. So make sure you have a story stick for each shelf. Once all the holes were drilled, I then test fit the story stick over all the hardware. It worked perfect and it was very easy. I went back to my shop and I now needed to transfer the hole locations from the story stick to the shelves. I taped the story stick to each shelf and then grabbed a 7 16 inch brad point drill bit and used it to mark the center of the holes on the back of the shelves. Once the holes were marked, I then used a doweling jig to drill a 7 16 inch hole into the shelves. The jig is a couple of inches high, so I need some really long bits to be able to drill to the required depth. In the description, you'll find a link to some pretty affordable, long brad point drill bits. However, I actually found it easier to drill the initial hole with regular drill bits. While the jig is a pretty tight fit, I found it easier to start with a smaller bit and then use the longer bits to finish off the holes. And now for our tip of the day. When moving around large, heavy pieces of wood, make sure there is something under the wood when you set them down. Thankfully, those did not land on my feet. To fully conceal the mounting plates and allow the shelves to sit flush up against the wall, I needed to create a 1 inch by 2 inch mortise, about an eighth of an inch deep, on the back of each shelf. The shelves are only 1 and an eighth inch thick, so that would leave a very narrow sliver on each side of the mortise. To cut these mortises, I had a couple of options, a chisel or a router. I'm not that great with a chisel and had recently gotten an edge guide for my router, so I decided to go that route. No pun intended. I'm glad I made that decision as the edge guide made this very quick and easy and the Bosch edge guide comes with a dust hood which made for very little mess. I was now ready to start prepping for finish. I sanded the shells down to 220 grit using my random orbital sander. Up to this point I've used water based polyurethane on all of my projects so I decided to try something new. I've seen water locks used quite a bit in other videos I've watched so I decided to go with that for these shelves. The biggest difference here is that water locks is oil based and I've never really worked with an oil based finish so there's going to be a bit of a learning curve. I started out by vacuuming all sides of the shelves to get as much of the dust off as possible and then also wiped them down with some mineral spirits off camera. And now we get to the finishing and this was a bit of a struggle and took way longer than I had anticipated. I started by wiping on coats with an old t-shirt and then letting them dry overnight. After the first coat, I noticed a bunch of shiny spots on the shelves. I did a little reading and was assured that I just needed to add more coats. I applied about four more coats and still had the shiny spots, so I decided to do a little sanding with 400 grit sandpaper. That ended up being way too much and I started applying more coats again with a day between each to dry. In between coats, I did more reading and realized that because I was wiping on the finish rather than using a brush, I could get away with allowing just a few hours between coats. This also meant a lot more coats to build the finish than when using a brush. 
Honestly, I, I'm probably eight coats in at this point, and I'm still not loving the look. They were just too glossy, so I decided to use some 4 aught steel wool to buff them out. This got me close. I added one more thin coat and called it good. It was a much longer road than I had hoped for, but in the end, they turned out great. The lesson learned here is I need to spend some time practicing finishes on scraps rather than learning on the fly with an actual project. I could now finally install the shelves over at Shelby's and I gotta admit I was a little nervous when I first started to slide the shelves onto the hardware. A bit to my surprise, they fit like a glove. I was really impressed with how easily the hardware worked. I'll definitely be using it again should I ever make more floating shelves. That's a wrap on this project. Uh, as I said during uh, earlier in the build, the, the most challenging aspect of the project was the finish. Uh, this is my first time using water locks or really any um, oil-based finish for that matter, so there's definitely a learning curve there. But I think it turned out pretty nicely. Um, however, the ultimate judge of that is her. So let's ask her. Shelby, what, what do you think? Two thumbs up. Great, awesome. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that red subscribe button and ring that little bell so you get notified every time I release a new video. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.